Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. I hope you enjoyed your Christmas and all. I did a lot of Pearl of dancing, I'll tell you that right now. And we are going to do some dancing because we're going to be talking about where is Phil Kessel going to go? The talk in Arizona has been right from the beginning that Phil Kessel has requested to look elsewhere. Which makes sense. He's getting to the end of his career. He's got. He's on his last year of his contract. Uh, he's won two cups with Pittsburgh, but you never have enough, and uh, it doesn't really make sense to keep him there in Arizona, where they're not going to be winning cups for probably at least a decade. Maybe, maybe they could do something, but it's not going to happen with Phil Kessel there. Phil Kessel's get 35 years old, and we're going to look at that here in a little bit. What he looks like, what his salary is like. And what teams might be in on Phil Kessel. But before we do, Steel Flyers All Sports Network, it's how I uh, am able to bring this to you. Go check it out. If you like four major sports and all the teams within those four major sports, you'll like Steel Flyers All Sports Network. The NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show, which I do from 3.30 to 5.30 Eastern weekdays. Come If you want to talk about anything I'm doing in these videos or anything to do with the NHL, any team, any time that I'm on, just pop on in and make your statement or ask your question or whatever the case may be, and we'll talk about it. Much frolic. See, there will be frolic. That is a for sure. All right, let's check out Phil Kessel. All right, Phil Kessel is <clears throat> from Madison, Wisconsin, the United States. Uh, he's 34 years old, and he's on a contract right now that's uh, AAV of $8 million, okay? Uh, however, we must remember that almost half of that will be paid out already when they make this trade. So... Teams that are out there that have the cap room and are willing to take them on without having to give up something back or just a pick, uh, they could probably get them for pretty cheap, like a third or fourth round pick, because I think most teams are not going to be able to do that. They're going to have to send a body back, ask for Arizona to retain or something of that nature to make it work. And we'll look at that as we go in. The more to retain, if you ask for a uh, for them to retain, Arizona to retain, which I'm not sure that they're going to be too keen on considering their financial situation there in Arizona. But Or send a player back, especially one on a, on a contract that may not stay in Arizona, so basically they're doing you a favor, the more you're going to have to pony up on a draft pick. I don't know if he's going to be able to pull a first, but... Let's look at what he ha is doing right now in Arizona. He has 21 points in 30 games for the Arizona Coyote, who uh, score like two goals a game overall. They, uh, they don't have very good uh, offensive stats there. So 21 points in 30 games is pretty darn good. He's an excellent power play guy. And he will... Uh, you know, he's going to help any power play. And he's won two cups. So he's playing pretty well. Now, he is not good defensively. Don't let this minus four fool you. Uh, don't, let, don't let plus minus fool you at all, really. It doesn't really tell you all that much. He is horrible defensively. He's not great defensively. Now, in the right situation where he's playing with the right players, so he can put up enough offense that it makes up for that. So especially for teams that are needing help on the power play. So let's look at some of the teams that may be needing help on the power play. Uh, oh, actually, first, let's just go to it. Let's just go to it, shall we? Nashville Predators. Now we're, we'll look at the Nashville Predators and where they sit on their power play. Uh Nashville, not bad, actually, but five-on-five five offense, it's not great. Now, in this sense, they 
it's not for the power play that they would be getting Phil Kessel, which would be odd out of all of these teams. Uh, they would be the oddball out of all these teams. But if you look at their overall offense and lineup, you have Matt Duchesne, who seems to be in and out of the lineup at all. This first line of Forsberg, Granlin, and Duchesne has been knocking it out of the park for Nashville this year. Uh, they've been relying on it heavily. Uh, Luke Cunning looks like he's kind of putting himself in a situation where he's going to be more of a third liner. And with Eli Tolvin in, who there's more offense in that kid yet. He's only 22 years old. And Ryan Johansson really putting up some best numbers of his career for a while. I think it would help an awful lot if they had an offensive guy like Kessel shoot that can pass and shoot. He's equally good playmaking as he is shooting, and he's a very good shooter. He's had 40 goal seasons. Uh, and like I said, they, they, he's won cups. Now, if Nashville thinks that they're going to be in it this year, and I would say that if you look at where they are in the standings right now, Right here, sorry, Nashville. They are, obviously. <laughs> they are. They are in uh they are they are in second place and in, in the, so they're doing much better than they thought they would. However, I don't think Nashville is a team that's looking to give up a lot of young assets. They also have the advantage of having some cap space to work with here. Go down to their cap space. Uh, current cap space, 17 million. Wow. Look at that. They got they don't even have to they don't have to take anything back. They don't have to give up a player. They can take a guy like Phil Kessel, take his contract at prorated about four million dollars and because of that they might be able to get away with only giving a third or fourth round pick they got two thirds this year in 2022 so they got they have the reason why i don't think that they're going to want to give up picks is because they're 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 really getting thin as far as prospects are concerned they're not the most deep on the prospect pool uh, in of all teams out there for sure, uh, they just picked up Cody Glass. He hasn't been been able to do very much there. Um, they uh, they they're using a lot of their offense. What am I doing? They're using a lot of their uh, young players now, and you know they just drafted Fedor Spechkov. He's not going to be around for a while. Uh, Alexander Campbell, how's he doing now? Clarkson, 15 points in 19 games. Not too bad. You might be able to see him up for a little while. But there's nobody knocking down the door to be in their lineup right away here. Um, Adam Willsby, like, no. There's nothing much here. So I don't think, I really don't think that they want to be giving up too many draft picks to pick up players. So Phil Kessel works perfect. They're sort of middle of the ground. This is a team that has been uh, getting it done by committee, playing a fantastic team game, but they could use a little bit of more offense in their lineup. And Phil Kessel fills that, fills that void. Also, I don't believe they have a single cup winner in their lineup. They don't have anybody that has made it this so far. As it stands, Nashville is probably a – you know, dark horse to make it. And I think they probably know that, that they're a dark horse to win a cup. They have two options. They can just go for it and try to get the biggest player they can to add into this lineup. Or they can toss a third for Phil Kessel and be able to um, have a guy that has been a previous 30-goal scorer add some offense and see what happens. I think they're a really good option for Phil. He's got an eight-team no-trade clause. However, he has asked to leave, and um, I'm pretty sure he's going to be happy to go with any team that has a chance this year. Next. 
Washington Capitals. Yes, the Washington Capitals. And you're going to say, well, we have no cap room. Actually, they have $1.4 million in cap room, if you can believe that. And they're going for it this year. Also, funny thing, believe it or not, Washington has a terrible power play percentage right now, if you can believe that, with Ovechkin and all the people that they have in their lineup right now. So Phil Kessel is fantastic on the power play. Uh, they're, they're, he's, they're a very, uh, Washington's a very offensive team. Oshie has not been having the best year this year. He's been in and out of the lineup a lot. So he can fill in in that top line when while Oshie's getting it figured out with whatever his issues are. Here on the right side with Backstrom and who else do they have out? Uh, maybe Daniel Sprong. Now, the, diff the problem here with Washington is that they are going to have to send someone back. And the other problem with Washington is that they don't have many draft picks. They're, they'll have to give up their second this year. And they I think they and ultimately they would like to eventually get younger. But that being said, the window is getting pretty small for Washington. Everybody's getting older. Ovechkin's 36. He'll probably played till he's 50. Who knows? But Kuznetsov is, only tw is still 29. Backstrom is 34. You know, all of these players are just getting older. And yes, getting Phil Kessel doesn't make you younger, but it does make them better and it helps out on their power play. You can put Phil Kessel with Backstrom or put Backstrom back up with Ovechkin and bring Kuznetsov here and have him play with Kessel. Um, Oshie is usually a right winger, but I do believe they've used him on the left side before. So you could put try Oshie on the left side, see how that works out. If not, they have been playing Oshie down here in the lower lines to have more offense in their lower lines. So they could just keep on doing that. Um, now, again, they would have to send some money back or ask uh, Arizona to uh, Arizona to retain some of the salary. It's probably about $4 million right now. And I would say that the likelihood is that they would give back in this situation somebody like Carl Hagelin or something like that, just to make it work and throw a second round pick in there. So tell me what you think, Washington fans. Carl Hagelin, a second round pick for a guy like Oshie who's going to bring offense and help your power play. Next, Minnesota Wild. Now, the Minnesota Wild, the situation that they're in is, of course, that they bought out Parise and they also bought out uh, Suter. So this year, their cap space looks not too bad. However, um, then following years after that, do you want to take a look at that? Yeah, the following years after that, six million, seven million, seven million, their cap space is not going to be good. But this year they got some extra cap space because it's only 2.3 on their or 4.5 on their cap right now. Really, if they're going to try to go for it a little bit this year, a rental is what they need. Um, I think people might make an argument that, that they would prefer to go after a center, and this would be assuming that there is no rental center out there. That It's not the easiest thing to find is a uh, rental center. Let's see what they have for cap. Right now, their projected cap is $2.7 million. So uh, Phil Kessel would run around $4 million. So they would really have to ask, uh, they would have to ask Arizona to retain or give up a player of, to, to make it the cap work like, you know, a Jordy Ben or uh, what else do we have here? Yeah, Jordy Ben plus probably would make it pretty close to work. So it wouldn't be too bad. But if you're going to do that, it may cost you a second, may cost you a third. But let's take a look what their lineup would look like. Oops. 
So you take Phil Kessel. Um, Kevin Fiala, they finally found a spot for him, and that might be the tough one in this. They find a spot for Kevin Fiala, and now they're going to move him down. However, what you can do here, I think it would be best for Kessel to play with defensive players because he's not that great defensively. So you could – Brandon Duheim <clears throat> is better suited on a fourth line, I think. You can put Kessel here, play him with Sturm, and – uh, Jordan Greenway. Sturm is an excellent defensive center. He can make up for Kessel's shortcomings. And Phil Kessel has a way of being able to find a way to score and produce offense with just about everybody he plays with. So Minnesota now would have much more offense coming from their uh, third and fourth lines, which I think is something that they could really use. Now, again, this would be probably – what, something that may, might happen if finding a rental center doesn't work out for them. But if it doesn't, I think Phil Kessel is a pretty darn good option. He comes off the books next year. You don't have to re-sign him. And you're really just kind of going for it this year. Um, after next year, things get a little tricky for Minnesota. So you might as well give it a shot and see how it works out. Tell me what you think, Minnesota fans. How would you like Phil Kessel on your lineup? Also, I believe Minnesota is not doing great on the power play. Yes, middle of the pack, 17.5%. Phil Kessel can help that. I don't think Phil Kessel has ever uh, not helped a power play. Yes, in Arizona, their power play is not good, but he has nobody to play with there. Any team that he's played for that have players that are worth playing with, Minnesota helps your power play pretty much all the time. Next, San Jose Sharks. And the San Jose Sharks really, I don't think they would ultimately want to give up picks. I think in the background, they're trying to keep all the picks they can, hope to hit pay dirt, and get by pay dirt, I mean, hopefully they hit and find guys that can play with these veterans that they can't trade because their contracts just don't work. Errol Carlson, Brent Burns, guys like that. However, they are in a playoffs race right now. So if you have an ownership that's like, you know what? Uh, also, San Jose Sharks are middle of the pack on the power play. And that would be, he, and Phil Kessel would be a boom to that. But San Jose is on, is, they're in a playoff race. They got 33 points. They're not far out of a wild card spot at all, and those markets in out in the coast, uh, out in the sunshine markets out there, it's a little bit difficult to bring fans. San Jose is not the biggest problem out there, but the fact of the matter is, making the playoffs makes your owner money, and this team, if they're in it may be willing to give up a second or a third for a guy like Phil Kessel to get themselves in. And you, you know what they say. Once you're in, you just never know. Reimer gets hot. One of their goaltenders get hot. They go on a run. They could do it. Not to mention, you got a lot of guys like Errol Carson, Brent Burns getting older here. They're going to be really pushing for ownership to give them the best chance they can to be a power play, or sorry, a, uh, a playoff team. And it's fairly cheap considering you're getting a 20, a 50 to 60 point guy for possibly a third round pick. Uh, you might be able to do a second round pick for San Jose. Let's see what they got. Uh, they got, that's the one big, see, they already got rid of their second next year. I don't think they're really high on doing something like this because I seriously think they want to keep their picks. But, there's going to be a lot of pull to say, oh, man, maybe we should just give it a shot. And if they decide to, I think Phil Kessel would be a pretty darn good option. What do they got for cap space? Projected cap space right now is $2.3 million. Again, they may have to ask to retain or give a player, or give a player back to make the cap work. Who that player would be? Maybe Radam Simic. I don't know if they would want to do that. 
uh, at Cogliano, who really hasn't been playing all that much for them. It'll probably be gone. Something of that nature. And because of that, it may cost, if somebody ponies up a second, it's going to cost you a second, in which case that would be their second in 2023. Personally, if I'm San Jose, I probably don't do that. I just want to keep on grabbing picks, grabbing picks, getting as many prospects as I possibly can to add to this roster as fast as possible. But they could do it. They could. Next, Philadelphia Flyers. And the Philadelphia Flyers, the reason why I have them in here, first of all, they're, they're, they're out of a playoff race by a little bit right now. Uh, however, this is assuming that they make a comeback here. here what am I doing? Oh, they make a comeback here. Because they can. They have a roster. They expect to. Philadelphia expects to come back and uh, make a make a run here. But they are 10. What? Oh, what, second wild card's only 30. They could do it. Boston has got a, a lot of games in hand. But if they go on a run, they can do it. And they have shown that they're really going for it. I mean, after trading, after tr letting Hextall go, making moves like getting Rasmus Ristolainen, and if Ellis can ever get back because from his injuries, uh, and now he's on COVID protocol, so um, he could be back at any time. That defense, their defense doesn't look all that bad with him in there. And uh, Carter Hart gets hot. They need a scorer. Pittsburgh, uh, Phil Kessel probably would dig the idea going in back to the Pennsylvania area that he's familiar with. And you could put, I like this line, by the way, uh, Faraby Hayes and Konechny, or uh, in Kessel. I think that would be a great line. Then when Cl when uh, Coots comes back, Couturier, you put him here with his old left winger, Giroux, and, uh, or sorry, not, did I say connect me with Kessel? Kessel, Hayes, Farabee, Giroux, uh, Couturier, and Atkinson, and then bring connect me down here. So get some offense in these third lines. Uh, who else is out right now? So you got Lawton, Broussard, and connect me, or Frost, something like that. And then Frost or Broussard can play down here, and you have more offense throughout your lineup. Right now, plus he has two cups on his resume. If we're going for it in Philadelphia, might as well go for it. The question would be, do they have the draft picks and do they have the cap space? Cap space is going to be difficult, I'm pretty sure. A million. They're going to have to do something. They're going to have to send a player back, which means and they don't have a second round pick. So it's going to be tough for them to do that unless they drop a first, and I would not drop a first on Kessel. Possibly the player that they send back is of value enough. Um, maybe they decide Oscar Lindblom is just not going to make it, but it's it makes it fairly difficult. They they don't think Morgan Frost is going to be okay. Uh, Derek Broussard could even it out a little bit, and they could retain. I think Philadelphia is an outside chance, but I think they'll be on the phone because they need power play players. They are terrible and have been terrible on the power play for a long time. 15.9%, and it's been like that forever. A guy like Phil Kessel comes in, and he not only is good for your power play on the ice, he can see how you can improve your power play. He's one of the best power play guys out there. I wouldn't even doubt if he becomes a power play coach in when he decides to retire. Finally, and I had this over and over and over again, the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, I didn't think that this was possible, but I've got asked about it so many times about Phil Kessel going to the Edmonton Oilers that I thought, you know what? Let's take a look at it, look at the possibility that it may happen. Um, Edmonton doesn't need help with their power play, for sure. They do need help with depth from anywhere that they could find. And uh, a guy like Phil Kessel could come in 
And let's say that uh, right now they have, who do they have out? Pulley, Jesse Puglia Harvey would, could play with Dreisaitl or he could play here with McDavid and Hyman. Phil Kessel uh, could play with uh, Dre and Nugent Hopkins. And I'll tell you, that line would be fantastic for sure. No doubt about it. Phil Kessel's got 20 points in 31 games on a bad team. What do you think he's going to do with a lineup like this? Now, if we're going to do this, we're basically saying we're going to outscore the opposition, and that's what we're doing. Because Phil Kessel's not great defensively. And Edmonton, in general, doesn't have too many players that are great defensively, certainly on defense. So it would be where I would be putting my uh, cap dollars, would be focusing on some defensemen that can play defense. But if you couldn't get something like that, then I suppose, why not? Let's just outscore everybody. Uh, Yamamoto going to go down here, and Kyle Turris could be part of the deal. He is a free agent after this year. It's basically just to – Kyle Turris gets to go back to Arizona. At this point, I don't think he has much of a say in where he goes. Like, he's just got to be happy that he's still in the league. And they could take him just to make the cap work, which – how is that cap going to look? Uh, do they have any cap space at all? $1.5 million. So you throw in tourists, that's what, 3.2. Kessel's on an $8 million contract, but it's prorated to about $4 million because half of it would be paid out by the deadline or maybe even over half. And the next question is, what are, they'd have to give up a second-round pick. I'm pretty sure somebody's going to throw a second to Kessel. Wouldn't be this one. Couldn't be this one because they did that wonderful move for Keith where that wraps up your second round pick for this year because if Keith does well in the playoffs, was he a top four in the playoffs time on ice for the first three rounds? The third pick turns into a second pick, so they can't trade it. So it would have to be this one, 2023 second round pick in Turris for Kessel. There you go. You wanted, you wanted me to ask about it? Tell me, Edmonton Oilers fans, what do you think? Shouldn't we should we focus our energies on defense? And then, if nothing happens, if you can't find defensemen out there, you know it's the Edmonton Oilers. They have a difficult time getting players to come their way. Seems like they so if they can't find anybody, should they just go? Let's go all offense. Go for it. We'll bring Phil Kessel. He's got two cups. He's got two rings. Bring some cup leadership in the room. What do you guys think of that, Edmonton Oilers fans? All right. That's my full 42, and that's our Phil Kessel extravaganza. Uh, come see me on my show, NHL Pro Wisdom Show. Until next time, have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.